Hello students, welcome to the class. So in the previous video, we have discussed about the synopsis on alcohols, phenols and ethers. So here we are going to discuss some of the uh, multiple choice questions on the same topic. Okay, so moving starting with the first question, wood spirit is commonly known as so which is which compound is commonly known as wood spirit. See, so they have given the options methanol, ethanol, acetone and benzene. It is correct option is option A. Methanol is commonly known as wood spirit or you can also call it as wood alcohol. You can also call it as wood alcohol. Yes, methanol is known as wood spirit or wood alcohol or you can also call it as wood naphtha. So there are many uh, names for it. It is also called as wood naphtha as the earliest method for its preparation was by destructive distillation of wood. When uh, the destructive distillation of wood was being done, destructive distillation of wood was being done, we, we got methanol. Therefore, methanol is commonly called as wood spirit. Moving to the second question, CH3OC2H5 is known, is or are known as so what is the correct option? It is an ether. So how do you name the ether? Alkoxy alkane. So this becomes a smaller alkyl group becomes alkoxy group. So it is methoxy methethane, correct? Methoxy ethane. But here they have given this name, common name. So they have asked which is the correct name. This is methyl group and this is ethyl group. So alphabetically we write it and the correct name is ethyl methyl ether. So students, you should be knowing all the common names as well as IUPAC names of the compounds, right? Okay, so it is known as methoxy ethyl methyl ether. What is the IUPAC name of M cresol? See, we have already discussed what is M cresol. It comes under phenols. We have discussed phenol is nothing but benzene ring, OH group attached to benzene ring. And so CH3 group, if it is attached, we call it as cresol. Now, depending upon the position of the CH3 group, we have orthocresol, we have metacresol, and we have paracresol. So, orthocresol is CH3 group at ortho position. Metacresol, if they have asking, so which one they have asked? They have asked us M cresol. M cresol means what? It is metacresol. That means the CH3 group is at para position. So, if it is at para position, so how do you write the name for it? Look at the name. It is carbon atom one here. So this is one, this is two, this is three. So three methyl phenol. Three methyl phenol is the correct option. So this is the correct option, correct? So three methyl phenol. Moving to the next question, alcohols and phenols are classified as? So alcohols and phenols both can be classified as mono, di, and tri, mono, di, and tri on the basis of depending upon whether they contain one, two, three, or many. Poly also comes. So whether they contain one, two, three, or many hydroxyl groups respectively. Yes. Therefore, you can classify them as monohydric, dihydric, trihydric, as well as polyhydric alcohols. Yes. Or polyhydric phenols. Correct. So the, the correct option is option D. All of them are correct. Next question, IUPAC name of the compound is. So when you are doing the IUPAC nomenclature, we know what are the rules to be followed. So we will start numbering the carbon atom here, one. So chain becomes two, three, then four here, and then this is fifth. So this becomes the substituent. It is ethyl group. So how do you write the name? Ethyl group is on second carbon. So it is two ethyl. Then for one, two, three, four, five carbon atoms, it is pent. On first position, there is pent ane. On first position, there is OH group. So it is two ethyl pentane one all, correct? So two ethyl pentane one all is the correct IUPAC name, okay? Which is the primary alcohol? Primary alcohol means the OH group is attached to carbon, which in turn is not attached to any carbon or the OH group is attached to carbon, which in turn is attached to only one carbon. So that becomes a primary alcohol. So they have said butane 2 all, one, two, three, four, butane 2 all. So here the carbon is attached to two carbons, butane 1 all, one, two, three, four, 
and OH group here. This carbon is attached to only one carbon. Of course, this is primary alcohol. Let us see other examples. Propane, two all, one, two, three. So this is OH, secondary carbon. Isopropyl alcohol. So isopropyl alcohol. So here we have C. Then OH. So isopropyl alcohol. No, this is also not the correct option. So which is the correct option? It is butane. One all is the correct option. Okay. So primary alcohol, secondary alcohol, tertiary alcohols. We know we know them. How to do the nomenclature? Then which of the which of the following alcohols contain sp3 carbon and OH group? So which alcohol contains sp3 carbon? which is attached to OH group, okay? Now, compounds containing sp3 carbon and then OH group is in the class of alcohols. They come in the class of alcohols. The carbon should be sp3 hybridized, means it should have a single bonded, yes? So, in this class of alcohols, the OH group is attached to sp3 hybridized carbon atom of an alkyl group. So, these are further classified. So carbon, sp3 hybridized and OH group. These are further classified into primary, secondary, tertiary alcohols. Then you have allylic alcohols. And then you have benzylic alcohols. Correct? Allylic and benzylic. So here you have primary. Here you have secondary. And here you have tertiary like this allylic c double bond c and then c o h so this is sp3 which in turn is attached to sp2 benzylic here we have benzene ring which is attached to ch2 group which in turn is attached to benzene so these are all the examples where o h is attached to sp3 carbon correct so it is attached to sp3 carbon so allylic vinylic alcohols are those wherein the OH is attached to sp2 carbon. Phenols are those in which the OH is attached to sp2 carbon directly to benzene ring, sp2 carbon of the benzene ring. So which one contains sp3 carbon? It is allylic alcohol. Yes, okay. The COC angle in ethers is how much? We have discussed this. In ethers, it is about 110 degrees. When discussing synopsis, I have made these points clear. So we have seen the bond angles also. Next, in alcohols, the oxygen of the OH group is attached to a carbon by a dash bond formed by overlap of a dash hybridized orbital of carbon with sp3 hybridized orbital of oxygen. Yes. So in alcohols, the oxygen of the OH group is attached to which carbon? It is attached to a carbon by a which bond? It is attached to a carbon by a sigma bond. Yes, so it is attached to a carbon by a sigma bond formed by, whenever you talk about sigma bond, it is formed by overlapping of sp3 hybridized orbital of carbon and sp3 hybridized orbital of oxygen. Yes, so bond formed is sigma bond, correct? So which is the correct option? It is option B. Okay, next question. In ethers, the two bond pairs and the two lone pairs of electrons on oxygen are arranged in C. So in ethers, the two bond pairs and two lone pairs of electrons are arranged in which arrangement? They are arranged in tetrahedral arrangement. So we have seen these questions very clearly in our synopsis. So the, approximately, they have the tetrahedral arrangement. Yes? Okay. Next question, ethyl alcohol is industrially prepared from ethylene by, ethyl alcohol is industrially prepared by ethylene from which of the reaction? Yes, so from ethylene is nothing but CH2, double bond CH2. From ethylene, you want to prepare ethyl alcohol. It is through treating it with sulfuric acid. So what happens? It forms CH3, CH2. 2 HSO4, yes, and then this on further hydrolysis. This on further hydrolysis, it forms CH3, CH2OH plus H2SO4. H2SO4. This is the industrial method of preparation of ethyl alcohol, ethanol from ethene. So which is the correct option? Absorbing H2SO4 followed by hydrolysis. 
action of nitrous acid on ethyl amine so ethyl amine ch2h5 amine nh2 nitrous acid hno2 so action of nitrous acid on ethyl amine gives us what when alkyl amines are treated with uh, nitrous acid we get alcohols so what do we get c2h5oh plus nitrogen gas plus there is formation of water so what do we get we get ethyl alcohol this is one of the method of preparation of alcohols from amines from amines next in the commercial manufacture of ethyl alcohol from a starchy substance from by fermentation method which enzymes step wise complete the fermentation reaction 10th standard question you can say by or science for first year biology topic you can say this is the explanation so from a starchy substance c6h10o5n this is a starchy substance when it is subjected for hydrolysis since here i am using n molecules i'll take n molecules first which enzyme is used we use diastase diastase enzyme from germinated barley we use what do we get we get n molecules of c12h22o11 what is this this is maltose so we get maltose from starch from starch i am going to take here two we get maltose so this maltose c12h22o11 when it is further hydrolyzed using maltase enzyme maltase enzyme yes from yeast what we get we get two molecules of c6h12o6 this is nothing but glucose this is nothing but glucose this glucose c6h12o6 when it is treated with zymase enzyme which is obtained from yeast again we get c2h5oh plus liberation of carbon dioxide gas so this is the mechanism preparation of ethanol by fermentation of starch yes first we use diastase then we use maltase and then we use zymase so correct option is option a correct so this is the reaction from starch gets converted to maltose using diastase enzyme maltose gets converted to glucose using maltase enzyme glucose gets converted to fermented to ethyl alcohol ethanol using zymase enzyme so diastase we get from germinated barley maltase and zymase we get from yeast moving to the next question commercially methanol is prepared by commercially so it is prepared by carbon monoxide subjected for reduction using using cuprous oxide zinc oxide chromic oxide at 573 kelvin and a high pressure of 200 atmosphere what do we get we get ch3oh this is the commercial method of preparation of methanol it is the commercial method of preparation of methanol so what is the correct answer it is a reduction of carbon monoxide in presence of zinc oxide and chromic oxide yes so that is the commercial method of preparation of methanol next tertiary butyl alcohol can be prepared by the action of so you want tertiary butyl alcohol so tertiary butyl alcohol is nothing but it is this oh so this is tertiary butyl alcohol so you want this they have asked you what can we use to get tertiary butyl alcohol see tertiary butyl alcohol if you want yes so if i want tertiary butyl alcohol i should go for ketones we know one of the reaction here see these are all grignard's reagents we know that formaldehyde gives primary alcohol acetal any aldehyde gives secondary alcohol ketones give tertiary alcohols so since they have shown here grignard's reagent i'll go for a ketone so the ketone what i'll choose is 3 uh, so here i'll take ch3 c double bond o ch3 acetone when ketone is treated with grignard's reagent so i need totally four carbon atoms so here there are three i'll take one more ch3 mgi grignard's reagent what do i get i get ch3 c ch3 
and here let me say I have O, M, G, I attacks here and to this carbon CH3 attacks. This on further hydrolysis. What do I get? CH3, C, CH3, CH3 and then OH here plus M plus M, G, O, H, X. So did I get a tertiary butyl alcohol? So this is tertiary butyl alcohol. So please do remember if they have given us Grignard's reagent, formaldehyde plus Grignard's reagent gives me primary alcohol. Any aldehyde, any aldehyde except formaldehyde plus Grignard's reagent gives me secondary alcohol. And any ketone, if I take, any ketone plus Grignard's reagent gives me tertiary alcohol. Yes. Moving to the next question. So correct option is acetone and methyl magnesium iodide. Next question, which of the following compounds on reaction with CH3-MgBr gives me tertiary alcohol? Again, so you have to select the compound. Here there is one carbon, so I should select a compound with two more carbon atoms. So, but here they have given all these examples. So, you can see there tertiary alcohols, which of these compounds gives me tertiary alcohol with Grignard's reagent. So if I want tertiary alcohol, they are formed by treating Grignard's reagent either with ketones, as we have seen in the previous uh, question, or with excess of ester, or with excess of ester other than formate, because formate will give you secondary alcohol. So other than formate is nothing but this acetate. So this is the correct option. This is the correct option. You can even write the reaction and see you're going to get the same answer. Yes. Moving to the next question, one mole of ethyl acetane, one mole of ethyl acetane on treated with excess of, it is not ethyl acetane, it is ethyl acetate on treatment with excess of lithium aluminum hydride in dry ether, subsequent uh, acidification gives us what? So ethyl acetate, CH3COO, COO. C2H5. This is ethyl acetate. So they have told us lithium aluminum hydride in dry ether. So even you can uh, and subsequent hydra uh, acidification. We are doing hydra acidification or sometimes they will give you H2 in presence of platinum also. Don't get confused. So what we are going to get. So here we are going to get CH3 CH2OH plus C2H5OH. So this is the reaction we have seen method of preparation of alcohols from esters by reduction of esters, right? So we are going to get ethanol, one molecule, and ethanol, one more molecule. So what we are going to get? We are going to get two moles of ethyl alcohol. We are going to get two moles of ethyl alcohol. Next, which statement is not correct about alcohols? Yes. So alcohols is lighter than water. Yes, it is correct. Density of alcohols is less than water. Alcohols evaporate quickly. Yes, obviously it evaporates very quickly. Alcohols of less number of carbon atoms is less soluble in water than alcohols of higher number of carbon. No, it is wrong. Alcohols of less number of carbon atoms are more soluble in water than alcohols with higher number of carbon atoms. And you know the reason also. What is the reason? It is due to a formation of intermolecular hydrogen bonding with water. Yes, so that is the wrong statement. Moving to the next question, 19th one. Dehydration of ethanol gives. So ethanol is what? Ethanol is ethyl alcohol. When you carry out dehydration of ethyl alcohol, CH3, CH2OH, dehydration is removal of water and it happens in presence of concentrated H2SO4 at 170 degrees Celsius. There is elimination of OH group and hydrogen from beta elimination. So we call it as a beta elimination reaction, which leads into the formation of CH2 double bond CH2. So what does it give us? It gives us ethene and water. So ethylene is obtained and molecule of water. Alcohols of lower molecular weight are, alcohols of lower molecular weight are soluble in water, soluble in all solvents, insoluble in all solvents, 
soluble on in water on heating no they are insoluble what is the correct option alcohols of low molecular weight so lower alcohols are soluble in all solvents lower alcohols are soluble in all solvents if they would have mentioned higher then the answer would be different so lower molecules of alcohols lower alcohols are soluble in all solvents next question ethyl alcohol on oxidation ethyl alcohol on oxidation with k2cr2o7 ch3ch2oh on oxidation with k2cr2o7 gives us what alcohol this is a strong oxidizing agent so it will give us carboxylic acid containing same number of carbon atoms so what is obtained it gives us acetic acid so it gives us acetic acid next question the reaction between alcohol the reaction between alcohol and an acid with the elimination of water is called so you are taking an alcohol and you are taking an acid okay let me say this uh, with the intermolecular elimination of water a hydrogen of alcohol and oh of acid goes out it gives a ch3 ch2 o c double bond o ch3 so it is giving me ester with the intermolecular elimination of water so this reaction is called what esterification reaction we have seen it in carboxylic acids also so it is called esterification reaction maximum solubility of alcohols in water is due to it is due to hydrogen bonding with water intermolecular hydrogen bonding with water so option c is correct next question which primary alcohol is oxidized with the chlorine when primary alcohol is oxidized with chlorine it produces what so when primary alcohol so ch3 ch2 oh this is primary alcohol when it is oxidized with chlorine it produces pcl3 cho yes it will produce this compound pcl3 cho it is called chloral what it is called chloral so it produces this compound yes you can write the iupac name also and you can mention the common name also so it produces ccl3 cho chloral next question which of the following reagents cannot be used to oxidize primary alcohols to aldehyde c if you oxidation we have seen alcohols undergo oxidation to give aldehydes or ketones which further undergo oxidation to give carboxylic acids however if you are using very strong oxidizing agent but we have seen typical methods for oxidation of alcohols only to carbonyl compounds that is aldehydes and ketones and we call them as selective reagents yes primary alcohols when treated with certain selective reagent it gives aldehyde or secondary alcohols when treated with selective reagent it gives only ketones so here they have asked which of the following reagent cannot be used to oxidize primary alcohol to aldehydes so if i want to stop the reaction at aldehydes only i shouldn't use a strong oxidizing agent so which is that strong oxidizing agent which i cannot use it is nothing but kmno4 in acidic medium yes cro3 in anhydrous medium it is for secondary alcohols to to ketones kmno4 in acidic medium it is for alcohols to carboxylic acids so oxidation of primary alcohols to aldehydes it is pyridinium chlorochromate and heating in presence of copper it is nothing but dehydrogenation reaction yes so which is the correct option it is kmno4 in acidic medium okay 26th question the acidic character of alcohols is due to what is the reason the acidic character of alcohols is due to the polar nature of oh bond because of the polar nature because hydrogen has to be removed to explain the acidic character so depending upon the polarity of the oh bond the acidic nature can be explained so only we have seen reaction with metals and uh, some of the bases it gives us salt and liberates hydrogen gas correct next question in the esterification or reaction of alcohols just now i have explained you what happens there it oh minus c options oh minus is replaced by c2h5oh is it right oh minus is replaced by chlorine h minus is replaced by sodium metal 
and OH minus is replaced by CH3COO group. So what happens in esterification? CH3COOH plus C2H5OH give with the intermolecular elimination of water gives me CH3COO C2H5 plus H2O. This is esterification reaction. So what is getting replaced? In, in place of OH, CH3COO is coming. So OH minus is replaced by CH3COO group. It is replaced by CH3COO group. So this is the correct option. Next, order of esterification of alcohols. See, order of the reactivity of different alcohols during, uh, on basis of esterification, it depends on primary alcohols to show a better reactivity because this group has to be replaced there. In place of OH, this group should come. So primary alcohols, less steric hindrance. Then comes secondary alcohols. Then comes tertiary alcohols. Tertiary alcohols. So due to, why? Due to increase due to increase in steric hindrance due to increase in steric hindrance in secondary and tertiary alcohols there is more steric hindrance so which is the correct order the correct order is primary secondary and tertiary alcohols you can see as the number of alkyl groups increase the steric hindrance also increases so in the primary alcohols, the steric hindrance is absolutely less because there are hydrogens. Moving to the next question, which of the following alcohols will give most stable carbocation during dehydration? So if you want most stable carbocation, you know that tertiary carbocation is most stable, right? We have studied this. So we where you get tertiary carbocation? Let me see. First example. Propanol, 2-methyl propanol, 1, 2, 3. Uh, so here, 1 propanol they have said, and this is 2-methyl. Second option, butanol, 1, 4. Here there is OH. Third option, 2-methyl, two 2-propanol. Two so here, 2-propanol, and here, 2-methyl. And this is butanol, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, OH. So here, if you see, uh, if this uh, dehydration has to take place, hydrogen should get out, yes? So where the it gives most stable carbocation, it is in case of C option, 2-methyl, two 2-propanol. Two because when hydrogen comes out, I'll show you the reaction also, CH3, C, CH3, CH3, CH, uh, OH, yes? So he, Protonation, OH, what it gives me? CH3, C, CH3, CH3, OH plus, correct? Then, removal of OH, OH2 plus. So, removal of water, H2O. When this H2O comes out, here carbocation formed, correct? So, see, look at here. So, here carbocation, here carbocation, here carbocation, and here carbocation is formed. This is tertiary carbocation. This is uh, Secondary carbocation, this is prime secondary carbocation, this is secondary carbocation, tertiary carbocation, correct? So here, which becomes more stable? So it is this carbocation, correct? Therefore, 2 methyl 2 propanol gives us correct answer, most stable carbocation. Next question identify the appropriate reagent for conversion of alcohol to carboxylic acid alcohol to carboxylic acid so you want to convert alcohol to carboxylic can i take pcc if i take pcc it will convert alcohol to aldehyde correct if i take copper it will convert alcohol to aldehyde or to ketone if i take anhydrous it will convert secondary alcohol to ketone and if i take kmno4 acidified kmno4 it will convert alcohol to carboxylic. It will convert alcohol to carboxylic acid. So, which is the correct option? It is KMnO4. So, only PCC and anhydrous uh, chromic oxide they are known as selective reagents for converting primary alcohol to sec uh, aldehyde and secondary alcohol to ketone, respectively. Yes. Thirty-first question: The process of converting alkyl halides into alcohols involves. 
so you are converting alkyl halide into alcohol so r ch2 x into r ch2 oh so this involves what type of reaction so x has to be substituted with oh so it involves what type of reaction it involves nucleophilic substitution reaction so what type of reaction nucleophilic substitution yes addition is for converting uh, alkene to alcohol which you can be you can remember these things also dehydrohalogenation is for converting alkyl halide to alkene yes rearrangement is for ketoenol so it is not the reaction so it is what nucleophilic substitution you can say or you can say nucleophilic substitution reaction yes what is lucas reagent what is lucas reagent so alcohols are soluble in lucas reagent what is lucas reagent concentrated hcl plus zinc chloride concentrated hcl plus zinc chloride while their halides are immiscible and they produce turbidity so in case you can explain this is a distinguishing test in case of tertiary alcohols the turbidity appears turbidity appears immediately correct turbidity appears immediately in case of uh, secondary alcohols if you treat it with uh, lucas reagent here also lucas reagent turbidity appears after 5 minutes correct in case of primary alcohols when you treat it with lucas reagent turbidity does not appear doesn't appear at all turbidity doesn't appear at all so lucas reagent is the test for determination of uh, primary secondary and tertiary alcohols so turbidity doesn't appear for primary alcohols at room temperature whereas for secondary alcohols turbidity appears after 5 minutes whereas for tertiary alcohols turbidity appears immediately so what is lucas reagent it is concentrated hcl plus zinc chloride next methyl alcohol can be distinguished from ethyl alcohol using so from methyl alcohol h3oh can be distinguished from ethyl alcohol using so to distinguish this we need to go for sodium hydroxide and iodine test which is called iodoform test which is called iodoform because spelling solution sifs reagent thallium fusion test they are all for uh, aldehydes no they it, it's not required so ethyl alcohol if you take ethyl alcohol treat it with sodium hydroxide and iodine it is iodoform test you will get chi3 only this will give us yellow ppt whereas methyl alcohol doesn't give us methyl alcohol if you treat it with naoh plus iodine here no ppt i do not get any ppt so i would this iodoform test can be used to distinguish methyl alcohol and ethyl alcohol next question methyl alcohol ethyl alcohol and acetone were treated with iodine and sodium so methyl alcohol ethyl alcohol and acetone ch3 c double bond o ch3 were treated with all of them were treated with naoh and iodine so all the three are treated with naoh and iodine NaOH and iodine. Which substance will give iodoform test? Which substance will give iodoform test? Only ethyl alcohol will give iodoform test. CH I three. This will also give CH I three. So these two, ethyl alcohol and uh, well, see ethyl alcohol and methyl ketones only show this test. Yes, which contain methyl and carbonyl group attached. So they give iodoform test. That means they will show yellow PPT. so they exhibit which test they show iodoform test whereas here since there is no ppt form because it does not contain methyl con uh, ketone so it does not show it doesn't show iodoform test it doesn't show iodoform test so which is the correct option only methyl alcohol and acetone only ethyl alcohol and acetone option c is the correct option okay 
35 question which of the following compounds will give yellow precipitate with i2 and same question so which will give option a yes it will give option b will it give only ethyl ethyl alcohol will give positive iodoform test that is it will give yellow ppt what about uh, second option propane one all it will not give third option that also will not give because there are ethyl groups and fourth methanol will not give so which is the correct option it is option a next question an unknown alcohol is treated with lucas reagent to determine whether the alcohol is primary secondary or tertiary which alcohol reacts faster and by what mechanism so 36th question so they have asked just lucas test so lucas test is for determination of primary secondary and tertiary alcohols just now we have discussed if you treat primary alcohol with lucas reagent that is concentrated hcl and zinc chloride it will not give turbidity at room temperature no cloudiness is obtained if you take secondary alcohol and treat it with lucas reagent it will give turbidity after 5 minutes tertiary alcohol will give turbidity immediately with lucas reagent now the re reason is the reaction of alcohol with lucas reagent is mostly sn1 reaction and the rate of reaction you know is directly proportional to the carbocation formed which carbocation is more stable we know that tertiary carbocation is more stable so therefore since tertiary alcohols form tertiary carbocations it will react fastest yes or no so by tertiary alcohols will form turbidity fast that too by which mechanism by sn1 mechanism because this reaction involves formation of more stable carbocation that is tertiary carbocation next what is methylated spirit what is methylated spirit so methylated spirit is nothing but methylated spirit these common names should be known to us so what is methylated spirit so 5 to 10% methanol ch3oh and remaining ethanol remaining everything that is uh, 90 to 95% of ethanol c2h5oh this is called methylated spirit this is called methylated spirit it is also known as a denatured alcohol what it is also known as denatured alcohol because it is unfit for drinking yes 5 to 10% methyl alcohol and 90 to 95% of ethanol is called methylated spirit its also name is denatured alcohol and it is unfit for drinking because it is unfit for drinking this uh, cannot be used for drinking okay par alcohol what is par alcohol par alcohol is nothing but it is 80% petrol plus 20% ethanol 20% ethanol this is called as par alcohol 80% petrol and 20% ethanol so what is par alcohol it is a mixture of petrol hydrocarbon and ethanol these common names you should be knowing students these all are required wood spirit methylated spirit denatured alcohol par alcohol next in order to make alcohol undrinkable pyridine and methanol are added to it the resulting alcohol is in order to make alcohol undrinkable yes undrinkable means it is denaturing yes so for denatured alcohol we have seen just now what is denatured alcohol it is methylated spirit but there are other terms also if you want to do denaturing 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 can also be done by adding some amount of pyridine and petroleum and cuso4 so how much amount of pyridine it is around 0.5% to 0.5% of pyridine petroleum naphtha and copper sulfate when you add these it becomes undrinkable yes so correct option and that is called denatured spirit what it is called denatured spirit it is said to be denatured spirit not denatured alcohol here methanol is called denatured alcohol and this is called denatured spirit so you are doing meth you are taking methanol you are adding 0.5% pyridine petroleum naphtha and copper sulfate etc or any of these can be added 
here they have said pyridine in some questions they may ask you petroleum naphtha in some questions they may ask you copper sulfate also any of these you add to a methanol it becomes a denatured spirit it becomes denatured spirit yes so the correct option is option c next question in the following sequence of reactions what is the product so they have taken benzene and it is treated with oleum fuming sulfuric acid so what do you get benzene sulfonic acid so we get here oleum is nothing but fuming sulfuric acid electrophilic substitution i get h3h benzene sulfonic acid which is my option p then it is treated with naoh first and subjected for hydrolysis when you treat it with naoh we have seen this reaction benzene sulfonic acid on treating with a base it will form ona o minus na plus sodium phenoxide this on further they have said hydrolysis correct they have said hydrolysis when you carry out hydrolysis what do you get you get phenol preparation of phenol from benzene sulfonic acid so one step extra they have asked so here totally i have to answer so what do i get i get this compound q which is nothing but phenol yes phenol so that first part what you have seen that is the explanation of a previous year next part is we have seen preparation of phenol from benzene sulfonic acid next question cumene on reaction with oxygen followed by hydrolysis this is also a very well known process which is called cumene process and we have seen how cumene is prepared so we first we take benzene treat it with propene yes what do we get we get a cumene that is isopropyl benzene so this is called cumene ch double bond ch2 and here we have ch3 this is treated with oxygen where we get cumene hydroperoxide we get cumene hydroperoxide ch3 cooh correct this is what we get then this and here there is ch3 group okay this on further hydrolysis h3o plus what do i get i get two important compounds one compound is our phenol and another compound is ch3 c double bond o ch3 this is nothing but acetone so i get phenol and acetone so correct option is option d phenol and acetone this is called cumene process it is called cumene process next question for phenols which of the following statement is correct which of the following statements is correct it is insoluble in water no it is soluble in water next it has lower melting point compared to aromatic hydrocarbons of comparable molecular weight no it has higher melting point it has higher boiling point than toluene yes because in toluene if you see yes there is hydrogen bonding phenol has higher boiling point than toluene because toluene is a methyl benzene ch3 attached to benzene but phenol is oh attached to benzene because of formation of hydrogen bonding phenols have higher boiling point than toluene it does not show acidic property that is wrong it shows acidic property so which is the correct option the correct option is it has higher boiling point than toluene next in phenols in phenols the oh group is attached to side chain then the oh is directly attached to benzene nucleus both a and b none of these if it is option c both a and b is it correct no it is wrong because if it is option a option a is what phenol oh is attached to side chain of benzene ring ch2 oh this is side chain if this is the case this is not called phenol it is called benzylic alcohol it is alcohol it is not a phenol it is benzylic alcohol which comes under oh attached to sp3 carbon only correct so there are three types we have seen alcohols 
which you call them as alkenols primary secondary and tertiary come under this we have allylic alcohols alcohols wherein double bonded carbon is attached to sp3 carbon which in turn is attached to benzene then we have benzylic alcohols i have shown you the example here itself these all come under s oxoh group attached to sp3 carbon but in phenols what is the case in phenols the oh is directly attached to sp2 carbon of benzene ring all the carbon atoms of benzene are sp2 hybridized therefore we say oh is directly attached to benzene nucleus to benzene nucleus right then action of diazomethane on phenol liberates diazomethane so phenol is taken yes so they have said diazomethane it is nothing but ch2 n2 in presence of a hydroborofluoric acid yes fluoroboric acid what we get we get benzene ring acidic nature o methylation occurs ch3 plus n2 gas is liberated so what do i get i get methoxy benzene anisole and there is liberation of nitrogen gas so which gas is liberated nitrogen gas is liberated when it is treated with diazomethane next question which of the following compounds will react with sodium hydroxide solution in water which of the following compounds will react with sodium hydroxide solution in water yes so first option is a phenol first option is phenol oh second option is benzyl alcohol ch2oh third option is c thrice c c oh tertiary alcohol fourth option is secondary alcohol so which will react with sodium hydroxide phenols are more acidic than alcohols we have seen phenols are more acidic than alcohols but they are less acidic than carboxylic acids so carboxylic acids being more acidic carboxylic acids correct so phenols react with sodium hydroxide in water to form so what do they form they form so phenol reacts with sodium hydroxide and forms sodium phenate correct o n a plus sodium phenate so they will react with uh, what because phenols are more acidic than alcohols so correct option is option a rest all are alcohols so phenols are more acidic therefore they will react faster next question benzoquinone is prepared by action of phenol with so when phenol i have told you phenol is not exposed to air because when you expose phenol to air or treat it with any of the oxidizing agent so here which oxidizing agent acidified sodium chromate i can take na2cr2o7 acidified h2so4 it forms benzoquinone conjugated diketone is called benzoquinone this is the structure of benzoquinone if you want to see it properly i can write once again the conjugated double bonds are at conjugated positions and there are two ketonic groups this compound is called benzoquinone benzoquinone which is nothing but conjugated diketones so when you oxidize oxidation of phenols gives benzoquinone and that is ca caused by highly oxidizing agent that is an acidified sodium chromate so these are few of the questions what we have discussed in the next slide we will be discussing about next question next set of questions thank you